Hello and welcome to the SC Playbook Podcast, head of NRL Supercoach Round 2, proudly brought, proudly brought to you, I should say, by Pat and George from Mortgage Choice SCW. Strong start to this week's podcast there. <laughs> Guys, we are in the midst of an NRL Supercoach cheapy crisis, at least... We were until about an hour and a half ago when team list dropped for round two. Our prayers have been answered. Round one team list were a horror show, but we've been given some decent cheapies. Finally, we'll get to those shortly, though. Here to talk through us with it is Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs chairman Adam Drusy. Ads, welcome, mate. Thank you, Timmy. Good to be here. Down 6 0 early with your intro there, but um, yeah. we'll fight back. Ads, I've had far worse starts to this podcast and love far worse in the future, mate. So it's all good. Also with us for the first time in 2024 is 2021's sixth placed overall NRL Supercoach finisher, Clementine Cassie. Clem, good to have you back, finally. Oh, thank you so much. It's so good to be here. So I finally did the big move down to Sydney. Um, mm. Absolutely loving it here. Um, loving exploring the Northern Beaches. I'm a Northern Beaches girl through and through. Met some awesome people and wish I did the move ages ago. But first time on the potty. Exciting many uh, many Waz fans floating around the, the beaches. Um, not really, but we can always turn some people, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Good to have you back on for the first time this year. Also with us, as always, Maddie the Waterboy. Maddie, you'd be happy, man. No, you know what? You'd be a mixed man. You've got your boy Talos Duncan in, yep. but Joe Harrow's out, so yeah, not a good I, that's, that's definitely more bad than good. Um, yeah, I'm stoked that Talos Duncan's starting, but like, just it's the not knowing, you know? Like, if, if they just told me he's out for the season, then I could cry for an hour, but it's just the not knowing. Like, now I'm going to be in purgatory for the next few days until a surgeon comes. Yeah. Nah, in all seriousness, it sucks. It sucks. Just give us the, the information. Don't give the poor bugger this uncertainty. Uh, guys, heaps to get through on tonight's podcast. Not as long as last week, which could have been a record break for SC Playbook. It was round one, so it was the big one, let's be fair. But it was about an hour 40, so it won't be that long. Uh, but before we do get into it, the SC Playbook subscription package is available as always, getting access to numerous additional articles, premium articles as such, on the website each and every round of the NRL season. It gives you access to our WhatsApp group, our community all in one place, going back and forth, giving team advice, our contributors thread. We can throw all our last minute trades, skipper, sit v start plans, all that good stuff, late mail thread, punting thread, it's got it all. Gives you also access to our, our unlimited group Unlimited League this year, it's called, major prize. The code for that one is 743596. The prize, if you knock off all the contributors, is $1,000. $500 if you're a non-subscriber that wins it. Uh, $1,000 if it is a subscriber that wins it. Either way, I'll be giving out $1,000 to people in that group. On today's show, the talking points from Team List Tuesday, and there's a lot to get through in that one. We're also going to be having a bit of a conversation on the weaker-looking cheapy scene to start the season and what that means to our team management, the, obviously the cheapies that have cropped up on the Team List this week. Bit of front-row chaos, absolute debacle. Is Terrell May a must-have or do we wait a week? Our hot topics is Brendan P. Kura, a sell. We'll be looking at our sit V starts for round two, our skippers, questions and all the rest of that. Before we get into it, ads, your team this week, how would you start the season, mate? Diabolically. Oh. <laughs> I think, you and everyone else. Like that's I, all right. I, I shouldn't be here. I'm a fraud to be here <laughs> as an expert. I, I don't even – the rankings so low, I can't even count that high. Yeah, can't physically get the words out of the mouth. No, I think it was um, like 65,000th or something. Mm. I, I, the number so big, I just, I just ran – it's funny, mate. But I, it's, one, it's week one, mate. We'll be, I mean, oh. I, I looked at the top team and it made me feel a bit better. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll catch that team. In. I, the the not-so-mighty Kuma Stallions, we were the same. It was about 830, so a poor score. But for the large part, and particularly comparing to other super coach teams out there that I've seen having a lot of issues, I'm pretty happy with the cheapies I've got. The ones I've paid up for, aside from, of course, Farmer Silly, which I think was uh, one, that, that fourth front row forward spot. spot I don't think there's going to be anyone out there happy right now. I'm very happy with my team, despite the poor score. My front row forward slot needs a lot of work, but Terra May was already in the plans after the Vegas games last weekend. Clem, any better? <laughs> um, no, my team has more issues in Vogue. My team um, scored a 7.99. So true to their name, Friday Beers, they performed mm. like they've been on the beers all weekend, <laughs> so not just Friday. Um, I think I'm in around about 80,000 place but you know what it's all almonds and upwards from here <laughs> it is can't get any further and also clem we were having a drink sunday afternoon you went one of the great early crows saying at least i beat someone 
I came out and had a good final game to the round. Thank you to the Hammer for his 79 points in one of the worst games of his career. What do you got to say for yourself? Um, I'm so sorry. You definitely bit me, but everyone bit me. Um, my little baby brother, he made his first super coach team ever last Sunday, and he scored over 1,000. Jeez. So I've had the crow from him, like, since then. He'll, he'll be on the show <laughs> next week. Now, uh, it is through gritted teeth that I throw to Maddie, the water boy. Maddie, <laughs> how did you go? Look, for the first time ever, Timmy actually didn't write the the what what do you call it the show notes for this this is actually i came in and demanded that i now <laughs> run this podcast um no i got 904 which was the best here but there's still you know 32,000 people ahead of me which was yeah i actually initially saw that and thought oh damn that sucks but then uh a few texts and listen around the traps to see what people got it actually wasn't too bad and just like hammer for you timmy i um i had val holmes and yeah. he saved me from a, a pretty disastrous week, which was nice. Yeah. And did you have full reserves this week, man? <laughs> I did. Because I, I, I know you don't always have full reserves. I know, but it's round one, <laughs> so it's the most likely that I'm going to have full reserves. I'm with impressed. I'm with impressed. the arrogance of the bloke and his hot start by comparative standards, he's going to start dropping a sub each week just because he thinks he can. Yeah, yeah. Damn right. <laughs> uh, let's get to it early. Don't go to panic stations. We have the same conversation each and every year, Clem, about this. Sort any issues out in your team, but you picked players for a reason. If they started slow and scored poorly, Nathan Cleary, Nico Hines, Caelan Ponga to a lesser degree, there are so many examples of it. I think a great example is Scott Drinkwater, who looked superb for the Cowboys. The Cowboys looked terrific. He scored like 47 or something. They scored like seven or eight tries, just managed to not be in any of them. And I see people saying, do I, do I bite the bullet? And do I go drinky to Turbo or Latrell? I'm like... The Cowboys couldn't have looked any better and people are wanting to sell drink water. Um, I think, Clem, the time that you, you move people on this early on is, you know, let's say you picked a player like Jason Tamalolo and he played 20 minutes. Players didn't get the minutes that you hoped they would have. Maybe they came out and there was a niggling injury that you didn't account for, things like that. But if it's just a poor score and nothing went amiss, be calm. That's exactly right. Um, I had a 26-point Nico Hines captaincy, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to panic about that. Um, so I've, I've lived through the 22-point Reese Walsh captaincy. I'm an old hand at this. Um, so for me, I feel like if you're trading out your premium players, like don't, they've got pedigree, and there's a reason that you got them in, and you got them in because these guys can mm. score the big points. So people trading out Nico Hines, people trading out Nathan Clary, um, you've got, before price changes, you've got another watch, right? Like no one's price change is going to... Uh, no one's price is going to change um, after this weekend. So you give them another go. Like um, people going Scotty D to Tommy T, like I don't understand that either. You're going very sideways. Um, just stick with your premium players for a little bit longer, the guys that you've gotten for a reason. I mean, Nico Hines, top scorer last year in Supercoach. Um, Two's in a row. You don't, that's it, yeah. So like, you know, watch him carve it up against the dogs <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> Jesus, good to be here. <laughs> well, good start, Clem. It's Positive twel start twel of the twelve nil, twelve nil early now. Adds, used to that, by the way. adds a very. You're a veteran <laughs> super coach. Uh, any words of advice for those people ready to hit the panic button? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I agree with Clem. Don't. The only the only thing I would say there is, um, someone like Turbo not picking Turbo. It might be that you thought Turbo didn't know how he'd come back and you watched him in round one think I must have him mm. so I could kind of understand making a change if you just you just can't bear the idea of going without a turbo you don't have to do it this week though to to Clem's point so um I certainly wouldn't be trading out a, a drink water as an example because you're panicking like that's crazy if you if you deliberately wanted drink you stick with him so um but I wouldn't want to be playing the season without turbo that's it's, just it's funny I, I wrote I put up about a four and a half thousand word uh, teams analysis from the, the teams that dropped today and I had written in it basically around everything we just said and one was the one of them was Pappenhausen and he scored about 30 points or something it might not have even mean that and I said don't hit the panic button on him you bought him for a reason he played against Penrith it was a dour affair just relax before publishing I actually went back and said although if you can get to Tom Trebojevic <laughs> I would probably do it because Tommy looks so good yeah he just looks a must but but Drinkwater could end up just as good. Yeah. Like he's, he did look good the other day. I'll tell you the other thing that came out of... I mean, there's so, so many reasons, and we'll get to them during the show on why not to panic. 
there were so many skewed minutes across round one. I look at the Roosters pack. I look at the Bulldogs pack. I look at the Dolphins pack because of injuries that happened in those games and players mm. that people are jumping on because they played inflated minutes. So it's just we want to see how all of those play out um, early on and just reassess. And the other thing that helps a little bit, there's about four or five genuine cheapy options who are named today. We'll get to those in the team list. But because they didn't play round one, they're also going to be about, they won't have their first price changes until round four. So any one of them that we're keen on, it just gives us a little bit more breathing room to potentially go to them. Yeah, especially if you've got someone like, um, is it Tua Picky, the yep. Warriors fullback? Someone like him, it might be that by round four you want to trade him out and maybe then the perfect option is you bring in a Galvin or whoever it might yep. be. I assume you can do that with Jules. So, yeah, I agree that that buy early on does make it nice to be able to pick up the right cash cows. Handy. Round three and four, yeah. Thank you, Benji Marshall. Let's get into uh, our first topic of the show. And uh, I said it was, it was going to be a major topic to open up on our massive cheapy concerns. We still have them. A lot of the cheapies didn't do great on the weekend. When I said that I was very happy with how my cheapies performed, and this is a reason why not to panic, I was happy with my round one squad for the most part, give or take. The halfback struggled, but I have faith in them. Front row forward, shit show, have a plan to fix that up. But my cheapies got their minutes. The forwards who I had there, if it was any of them, got like Danny Levi played half decent minutes. I know he was rescued by a try, but there wasn't much else out there. Uh, possibly Lusick. Um, my centre wings looked pretty good. They got through work rates. Jesse Arthur's a bit more than a cheapie. Dodged a few guys, so I was happy with them. But it does look like cash generation is going to be tough to start the season. The four or, four or so cheapies that have been named might be an end to some decent money for us over the next month or two months, but far from sure things. In terms of changing approach, it's going to change the, the game pretty dramatically, I think, this season, unless they do emerge. I think one way that I will be changing my side, probably a little bit adds, is guys like Nico Hines, Caelan Ponga, Nathan Cleary, who... Even at the price, in recent years, if they start off and they go 40-40 and they have a massive break even, they're about to plummet cash in round three. You go, you know what? They've got the pedigree. I'm going to hold on to them. They'll come good. The way to make cash this year could be selling one of those guys if they back up with poor scores again this weekend. They drop 150 to 200K. In the meantime, you find someone with that negative break even who's set to make 150 200K Potentially, you'll sacrifice some points in the process, but that could be the in to generating cash if these cheapies don't come on board like we're hoping they will. Yeah, interesting. I hadn't, um, I hadn't thought about that, but it could well be that's how desperate it gets. I guess it depends. It's different, yeah. but it's a tough start to the year. Well, the other thing is, if you go the other way, every other team's going to have the same cheapies, mm. so you won't be able to differentiate yourself. So maybe if you want to differentiate yourself and actually kind of be higher on the ladder, maybe you need to do something like that. But it's. I don't know, it'd be a pretty scary proposition if you were running without a Nico against mm. the Tigers. I'm not going to say the Bulldogs. But, <laughs> but, yeah, but you, you wouldn't want to be missing one of those guns yeah. against... Yeah and, I, yeah, and I fully agree. But at the same time, desperate times could be desperate measures. Mm. Not that we're at, at that point yet. And with the cheapies name, hopefully they can do a job for us. We get another week to have a look at a lot of players. You know, there's every chance that Cleary, Hines, Ponga will go 100 plus this week. No, no panic stations. But I think there could be a really... It's going to take more trades if you go down that route, but it could generate cash and it could do it quick. Clem, tough start to the year in that regard. How do you see it? Um, so it's definitely changed the way I probably play Supercoach. So my start's like been not great. So um, normally I wouldn't make any trades until about round three. Mm. Um, this time I feel like there are cheapies out there that can generate cash for you. So um, I feel like if you want to make some trades early on, um, I'm fully on the bandwagon now of setting my team with the cheapies that are out there and that look like they're going to generate cash. Um, so people like Smithies, um, even to a picky, um, if you don't have him, um, like I feel like there are cheapies out there. There's some more name today. So I feel like now's a good time to sort of set your team with those guys. Um, I do have here though too, like I'm more than happy to use a boost um, next round after watching Nico and Clary again. If, if, if Nico doesn't go big this round, um, then by all means, it's kind of goes towards what you were saying. Um, I would drop him and get in, do a boost and get in three like guys who look really mm. good um, with that. So yep. absolutely. Yeah. 
so d- sort of to put into practice a little bit, I'm not just sort of talking fluff about happy with my cheapy scene. I and I said the I say this each and every year. I'm always happy to pay up a bit extra for my cheapies if they've got job security, more scoring potential, etc. So Jesse Arthur's 376k scored 48, got a really weird down day from 60 to 48 a week after that game, which hurt, but whatever. Jack Bostock looks saved by a late try, 38 points, 314k, but looks pretty well set into the team. The Dolphins at the moment, Tane Torpiki, 49 points for the Warriors. You know when Charles Nicholl Cookstag comes back. He'll be playing fullback for the Warriors, but could get three, four, hopefully even five games in there. Hopefully he can generate a bit of cash for us. Um, so by and large, pretty happy with how they've panned out early on. Again, disregarding the front row forward spot. Um, question from, you sort of touched on boost there, Clem, but there's a question from Mitch Hogan asking, saying that he's rookie to the game. Can you explain the difference between a trade and a trade boost and when is the best to use it? So let's have a brief little chat about boosting and uh, for the first time is out there and our strategies around it. Firstly, the difference between a trade and a trade boost, there are five, on five occasions, five rounds in the season of your choice, you can activate a third trade for that round. It counts in your 46 trades for the season. So it's not like you're getting extra trades, but five times you can use an extra one uh, on your team page. You can activate that if you want to use three trades. It's a really valuable tool came in for the first time, was it last year? Was it the year before? It might have been two years ago before. now. It was yeah. the year before. So, so the jury's still out a little bit on the best way to use them and I don't think anyone's out there saying they've got the exact method to it. I try to use mine a little bit later. I've seen a few people, a good super coach head, saying that they've used them early in the season. They go hard, they get their team sorted. Uh, Ads, I'll start with you, mate. What's your take on boosts and uh, how are you looking to implement them this season? Are you looking at potentially an early one? Oh, yeah, I've typically saved them for the buy period. So, um, you yeah, know, you get to origin and you're struggling to feel a team. Now, it's obviously different now. It just takes the top 13 players. So that's less of a requirement. But I probably will still save them for later on during the year. I just think it, there's, there's not a crisis this week where I'm thinking I must I must do X or Y. So I think if you, unless you're really panicking, I wouldn't be burning one early. I'd be saving because there will be some other week during the year where you lose three guns in one week and it's a hard luck story, but then, and then I'd be using a, a boost. So we just know those things come up at some point. So between that and buys, I think I'm going to save it for a bit later on, yep. save them, yeah. Clem, I think you mentioned you're open to using one early. I'm the same as you. I don't know if I've traded in round two, the last two years from memory, because I was really happy with my 25-man squad this year, a few little spot fires to put out. So I will be trading this week. Um, and I'm also very open to using even one trade boost early on. I think round three is a great time to do it. I think I boosted last year in round three because we get those first price changes. You know, we have a two-week sample size of are our players duds and, and underwhelming for a reason or was it a one-off in round one? How do you say it? Um, so I've very much always been one to hold my boosts and use them around about around the buys too. Um, but yeah, this time around, I just feel like um, it's so viable to use one early on um, and definitely I would use one next week. Um, just if I had to, to free up some cash to get some of the guys mm. that are actually firing um, before price changes. Um, but yeah, definitely you can use them strategically. Like I think you can use them to suit your team. Like my team is like, like I said, more issues in vogue. Like I really need to start thinking about doing some trades to get in the right guys mm. um, and I feel like a boost um, use it strategically don't just use it because it's there and you want to like rage trade a whole heap of players um, but you know if you're doing something like downgrading a nickel if he doesn't fire again and then you can get three really good players like I feel like it's so viable to use it early on to really set your team for the rest of the season I think a really simple way of looking at the boost uh, you ask yourself the question when you're doing your trades for the week do I want to make a third trade this week or do I need to? Because there are weeks where you yeah. need to. Mm. And you know when that happens because you're going, what I would give if I could use one more trade, whether it's to generate a bit more cash or to get an extra gun in with a dream matchup, you just go, I wish I had a boost to use. If you're sitting there going, oh, I could use one, should I, shouldn't I? You probably don't need to, to be honest. Um, the way I do it, I love around three boost. I love a boost after the origin period. So we've used uh, a lot of trades during that period to get as many on the field or to try and get that 13 on the mm. field on those three major buy rounds. 
a boost after that third origin by uh, weekend just to get your team in order for the run home. They're two that I try and sort of set in stone as best as possible. And again, it changes every year. Um, other than that, whatever suits your team. There'll be people sitting there who have just have a really good 25 to start the year. They've just done it well going, I don't need to boost. Like, I might not need two trades round, round two or three sort of thing. Great position to be in. That'd be... Uh, let's get on to our front row plans, and this will cover <laughs> up, uh, off a lot of the, the hot topics as well because <laughs> it's just an absolute disaster of a position. I was so close to going Terrell May for round one, and then just with all the uncertainty around their Roosters bench and minutes, he got named on the bench. Rhea Hargreaves just to come back and went, nope, let's just see how this plays out. Adds what I will give to have started with Terrell May and just have one of those spots locked in. I know, I know. I think the only good bit was last week we knew we probably wanted to bring him in this yeah. week so we could set the rest of our side around planning for that. So I I plant, you know, I brought in Palacio yeah. off, off your um, sterling advice. And at, at the uh, time of recording, I didn't know he was getting You're benched. a genius at that point, I know. <laughs> yeah. but, I, but I did also leave myself enough cash so I, yeah. could, I could make the trade without needing to make another trade. So that will be my first trade. I've, I've already made it. I feel better looking at my, yeah. my, sc- my screen seeing uh, Terrell May. I don't think he's a must, by the way. But if you've got a Palacio or a Lolo and you're worried about it, then he's a great option. But if you've got, I don't know, if for some reason you you brought in, say, a Flegler or an AFB or something like that, I don't. Terrell May is not going to make or break your season. But I don't think uh, I have ever. In fact, I definitely haven't picked a bloke in my team at any stage of the season, but particularly round one, knowing that he's going to leave my ra- team in round two. So. Look, it played out even worse than we anticipated, but we just I saw Terrell May last week and I said, I want him in my team, obviously with this unique split round, and I went, who's around about the price that I can make the move to the following week? And it was Palacia, uh, name yeah. to start. It got to game day. He got shifted to the bench on a 4-4 bench, and I went, God, I'm like, get me 30 points. I think he got us 22. Uh, it couldn't have gone any worse, but catcher. Talk to us about Terrell May and why you say he's not a must- I can see the argument for sure. Jared Warrior Hargreaves coming back into the team is the big concern there. The other issue there is Satili Tupanua and Sua Wong, who went off injured in Vegas, didn't finish the game. He came on Terrell May at about the 26 minute and he played, I think, 54 minutes straight. You know, I'm backing his ability and I think he'll get the minutes. Why do you think maybe not a must? Because I know he's the most traded in player yeah. for obvious reason. What do you reckon? Well, I don't think he's a must just because of a the price. I mean, he's not like he's two hundred thousand. He's about to skyrocket. He's four hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah. So he's not no price you're not change. Gonna, this you're not going to make a fortune with him. Uh, the other thing was Trent Robinson. His comments after the game. It seemed pretty clear that it wasn't the plan to play him the whole time. Yeah. And he said something like, "He was just playing so well. I had to keep him out there." So it was almost like he played so well. He did keep him out there for extra minutes. And there's just uncertainty about how many other guys come in back in that pack. Like you say, Jared comes in now. Spencer Lenu being. Suspended probably means there's one less you know, top quality front rower to, to, to take away minutes. But look, in saying that, I am bringing him in. I think yeah. I, and I'm feel good about him being in there. I think he can go bigger than he did last week with attacking stats because he, he just looks so good at the eye. But I, it's more you know, if you've got Flegler, you don't need to downgrade Flegler to May. Correct. Because because he's going to kill your season. Yeah, well, I, I can't remember having two brothers in a super coach side before. Because now I've got Terrell and Taylor. And I'm just trying to think, have <laughs> I ever had... that side. Yeah. Can't remember having two brothers in my supercoach side. never ran the Luke Burgess-George Burgess combination? <laughs> <laughs> I might have had Sam Burgess with uh, one of the other two. I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. But um, I've got to say, Taylor looked pretty good as well. I'm very happy to have oh him in the centres. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Taylor May, 67, basically yeah. in base. He had one line break, bust like 10 tackles or something stupid. Uh, another example of why I was saying, I right, didn't score the best, but... Two of us, Shaq and Taylor May, yeah. both I mean, 67 and 48 or something. They both had a ton of runs, a ton of tackle bass, just looked so likely. So, so happy with them. The scores will come there. Clem on Terrell May, 430k. 21 tackles, three offloads, 17 runs, some tackle bass, just looked the goods. Um, and I like what you said there, Ads. Basically, on any other year where you were somewhat happy with your front rowers, or let's say you started with Tommy Flegler and... God, I don't know, whoever else it might have been who went all right in the front row. You can wait a week and watch on Terra May and see mm. that his minutes. But if you have fires put out, he looks the best of a somewhat bad bunch. 
But Terrell May, there's keeper potentially in there. Clem, is, is he coming into your side this week? Oh, he's absolutely coming into my side this week. My front row is like just an absolute mess, eh? I also had Palacia there. Um, I do have Cotter. So Cotter was my one shining light and he didn't really, he didn't really fire. <laughs> it's about 48. <laughs> I think he got about 48, yep. Um, 46 I, I, actually. I suspect with Cotter, Cowboys forward rotation, real weird one because of what happened to Malolo, but... Because it was a blowout win, I think they were happy early in the season not to kill Cotter with 60, 65 minutes. I reckon in a tighter game, he plays bigger minutes than that. Yeah, well, that's nice to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely bringing in um, Terrell May. So um, for me, one of my problems last year was I just sat and watched and waited on guys for like way too long. And then by the time I bought them in, they'd already made a bunch of cash. And I mean, then they just for some reason stopped scoring the second I bought them in. Bull is a <laughs> perfect example of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so I did it was all a dream and then I didn't have him in my team. Um, but yeah, We've so all done it. I did until the trail two years ago. <laughs> so for me, yeah, I definitely need to fix my front row. And for me, he's the guy that's going to come in and I have more confidence having him in my front row. Um, I'm just looking at it now. I have Willison on my bench. Still, like I Not named again. Yeah, yeah, I have some issues there. Um, but yeah, um, that makes me feel much more confident. Looking at that with him with Cotter, I do have massive FOMO from the guys that started with AFB. Like, oh my god, watching him on Friday night, I was just like, why did I not? <laughs> I spent the whole preseason saying like he's not going to match his try scoring of last year, and he scored about twenty minutes of the game. Which went, oh, he's so good. <laughs> and how was that run? Oh, he was just incredible, wasn't he? He could have scored a second try. He's yeah. in my draft side, so I was happy about it at yeah. least. Oh, that actually that night I watched that game with Spy at Spy headquarters and. I got an, a spy masterclass in combinations <laughs> and it's all I can talk about since then. <laughs> Did he take you down like some 300 metre lift I got via a, a rock <laughs> on the side of a hill into the spy cave? I got like an absolute play-by-play -play on how every combination on the field works. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First one off for the uh, this season for the spy actually. He's been, been big this year. Um, my front row, Taumalolo. 16 points, played 20 minutes, and he thought, okay, he went off early, disappointing. Second stint, hopefully comes back and goes, all right, he didn't come back on ads. Since it's happened, I've asked a lot of questions. It sounds like there's some ongoing knee injuries or something going on there. Um, you know, there are other suggestions that they had the big lead by the time he would have come on for his second stint. So, you know, with any niggling injuries he might have, they just didn't bother. Are you giving him a week, a week to see if he comes out and plays normal minutes and get a proper gauge of him, or are you just cutting the cord? I think at the moment I'm keeping him just because I, I don't know who I'd trade him to. Yeah, like I'm, I'm trading out Palacier first just because I'm, I'm thinking maybe Lolo plays more minutes this week, but I don't feel good about having him sitting there. But I just, I don't have enough cash to. I, at least I don't think I do. I have to have mm. a look, but I don't think I've got enough cash to bring to someone else that I feel good about having next to May. So at the moment he gets a week's reprieve and then. Next week, work out a what to do and b who the best option to bring in yeah. is. I so number one most spoiled, so, spoiled sold <laughs> Spencer Lenu gone for eight weeks. Good, obviously for Terrell May, certainly not going to hurt him. Uh, number th three most sold Jason Taumalolo. Look, I can't bite back on it. I don't know if I'll be holding or selling at this point. Number four, Keenan Palacia, for obvious reasons. The Tides are on the buy this week. We'll get to skippers later. I have a very tricky little ploy there that could see Palacia last a week. Mm. Number 10, Jai Arrow. That'll, so this was done before team lists and news of Jai Arrow getting injured, which came out not long before team lists. Rotator cuff injury could be the season. Sounds like minimum maybe five, six weeks. So Arrow's obviously got to go. We'll get to a few of the trading targets there shortly. I think Farmer Silly, name to start again at the Doggies. Just got to hope he gets a few more minutes, but... Looks like he could just be an absolute plodder in that spot for a while. But hopefully, hopefully the minutes come there. Sammy Hughes, not the best ads, but you know what? I think you sort of mentioned last week he'd probably ease into it. Gus Gould on Twitter did the same. He said, you know, he's only played a handful of minutes in the NRL. He'll build into game time. I'm pretty happy with Sammy Hughes for his, I think it was something like 32 base in about 30 minutes. Definition of a slow burn, but I think he'll make his cash over the eight to 10 weeks. Yeah, I think so. Um, let's hope he gets more minutes from a super coach point of view. Mm. Uh, it was a bit of a tough, tough game to come into as well. Like they, he came into that game and it wasn't wasn't an easy spot for a front row to come into the game. It wasn't like we were kind of rolling over yeah. the Parramatta pack or anything. Like it was, they were tough carries and all that sort of stuff. So uh, definitely worth holding him for 
Yeah, put it this way. I think everyone will have bigger issues than Sam Hughes in their side this week. Yeah. Getting into the key talking points from Team List Tuesday. We'll touch on the main ones here. And there's a, a few to get through because there were so many. Uh, Guru and I on beers and break evens in the morning. We do the bigger deep dive into Team List Tuesday and all the major, major stuff to come out of that. At the Broncos, still no Xavier Willison. Uh, Marty Tapao in the side as well. So, look, I wouldn't shock to see Willison come into the game day team. For the moment, largely irrelevant. Wait to see him get a run. It won't be far away and see the sort of minutes he get. Brendan Piakura has been named despite the head knock in Vegas. Looks like he's good to go for that game. We'll get... No, we'll talk about him now. Clem, Piakura is the second most traded out player at $426,000. I cannot believe it. I cannot understand it. I don't understand why he's the most traded out. Like, he's still the same player that you chose mm. because he's in such a good team and because, you know, he's locked down that start. He's he's a great player to have at, like, a really good price. So, um, yes, he got a four, but that was because of an HIA. Like, he had not. Like, yep. it's not it because happened. he went out and performed, like, at a four. If you got four points in 80 minutes, sure, yeah. there'd be concerns. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Ronaldo and Mulatalo type vibes. Yeah. He'd be giving Nico Hines a run for his money last night. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I honestly don't get this trade. I think if you can hold him, like... You, like I said, you bought him in for a reason. Like, this is one of those players, this is a full-on rage trade, in my opinion, mm. because he scored a four. But give the bloke a chance this week. He's not going to be price-changing this week. Still in the same team. I reckon he comes out and kills it this week. Locked into an 80-minute roll. You, you covered it all very well there. Locked into an 80-minute roll. One of the best teams in the competition. He's a try-scorer. I just mentioned that money, cash generation is going to be an issue this year. I can easily see him being over 600k in six, seven weeks' time. The other thing to note, price changes occur, as we keep saying, after three games. At the start of the season, a player's first game, that drops out. Also, the break-even is calculated on a three-round average. The first game drops out of that three-round average after one price change. So it's not a major concern. So it's not ideal, but that four will drop out of his score after one price change. So... Look, he's a guy I can see making 150, 200k. He's also running at a south edge that basically never played together yep. this week. They've got Gagai, you've got Tass, who played on the left all last year. You've got Talis Duncan coming in for his first starting game, and then Lockie Elias. So it's perfect. Yeah. Jeez, don't South fans turn quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough characters. We were yeah. talking about them winning the comp two weeks ago. Glad you don't support the dogs. Yeah. So look, I just. I can't leave people trading him out, but look, do as you please. I really, I hope people do, but we'll see how we go. Uh, Jai Arrow, you mentioned there, Maddie. Jai Arrow gone, Talis Duncan, 314k starts on the edge. The other good thing here is that Jacob Host is out who can play on the edge. Shaq Mitchell is, is in. It's a four middle forward bench at the Bunnies. For any player, particularly a rookie, you hate a four forward bench. But a four middle four bench, it bodes well for for him playing big minutes, Talis Duncan. Yeah, if I was a if I was a punting man, which I am, I'd definitely <laughs> bet on him to play the eighty. Um, of course, there's a chance that maybe maybe he plays. Uh, sorry, maybe Murray might go to the edge for a mm. bit, and someone else can come and plug that middle, and that's how he gets a break. But I would consider that unlikely. It's definitely possible, but I think he's going to get a lot of minutes, no matter what. And. God forbid that the Rabbitohs go back to Jacob Host as a starting edge back rower who's literally dropped out of the team. You don't have a lot of edges that can come in there, do you? No, no, not at all. They're pretty light on. Yeah. Pretty light on there. Now, like, obviously with Keon and, and Arrow and Murray, that's a great back row with Murray in the middle there. But with Arrow out now, it's, yeah, you're yeah. right. It's tough. Available at 2RF. Look, the majority of these cheapies, I think... Or let's just wait a week on them. No need to sort of rush into it. I don't mind Talis Duncan early if it's your, your way to generate some cash. But like anyone, like I said, Ken Murray could spend 30 minutes on the edge. So let's just try and see the minutes of Talis Duncan. Great football, good attacking output. Really, really like him. Wish he was there round one. Uh, Royce Hunt. Sorry, ben- it's also his first two games are against um, Brisbane and Roosters as well. So it's a, it's a pretty tough start. Yeah, It's yeah. a pretty tough start for him. That's right. If you get through some work, old TD. Royce Hunt benched at the Sharkies. Lots of people went to him last week. Scored about 12 points, 330k. I want to be critical and say, why would you go Royce Hunt? But I've also got 
Palacea, Taumalolo, Hughes and Farmacilli in my front row. So <laughs> like, how can you be critical? <laughs> there were just terrible options last week and I've been lumped with a few. Roy Hunt hasn't panned out. He came on and threw a terrible offload and looked like he got dragged pretty early. Maybe he can see his minutes again, but if you can go Royce Hunt to Terrell May, that looks a great trade. Uh, adds at your doggies. Connor Tracy comes in on the wing for his first game as a dog in the NRL. Kiraz remains at centre. Don't love this for Kiraz. Don't love it for the doggies in general, mate. I wish Tracy was at centre and Kiraz on the wing. Um, in the pack, Pawasa, pack stays the same. Pharmacy is starting. Salmon at lock. Salmon played 80 minutes on the weekend and went to the edge when Fox went off, I believe. So yeah. just the minutes of Hughes. Curran came on and played out the rest of the game. Still a watch on minutes without any injuries to impact that for me. Yeah, I think any time there's been an a injury effect rotation like that where they've had to move Salmon. So obviously that wasn't the plan. That just makes you wonder what was going to be the rotation. Yeah. So was current going to get 65 minutes who, who knows like I, I genuinely don't know the answer myself so so that it's just i wouldn't overreact to one week where there's an injury yep. that throws things out like that so i think that's one trick if you're um if you're new to the game but yeah look you, you don't have salmon right so you don't have to worry about no i, I wasn't keen on him at all 313k he played 80 minutes the base was ordinary it just it wasn't there and he played i, I know he spent close to a half was it on the edge, yeah. but ugh. second half on the edge. Because I don't, I think he, I don't think he would have played. I tipped him to be sixty minutes, probably max, if he did stay on the field and there was no injury to Fox. Well, he played the full first half. Yeah, which is, which is amazing. But yeah. so I he, said to you last week, yeah. got a lot wrong, got a few things right. Mm. Just don't think the output's going to be there because he's he's there just to be a ball playing lock and yeah. no work rate. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Whereas Josh Curran, do you have Josh Curran? No. Yeah, I'm glad I've got Josh Curran. I, I thought Josh Curran looked good. Uh, you know, tough week for attacking stats, but yep. I think they'll come with him. So I think he's a, a nice one to have in this. But I don't have Lukey. And when I saw him score that damn try, I was yeah. furious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy about Lukey. Uh, again with Salmon. So played 80 minutes, 29 points, base was poor. But again, let's see how many minutes he gets in the forwards where people picked him for essentially. So give it a week, but yeah, the signs aren't overly promising there. Maxi King only got 42 minutes, 45 points, great work rate, was really surprised. Again, keep saying it, let's just watch it this week. Josh Curran included because if Curran comes on after 15, 20 minutes and, and he's to play 60 straight, he'll be a great buy. Uh, one I'm willing to wait until next week for though. Scotty Sorensen returns at the Panthers. Big watch on Liam Henry who played some half right minutes last week. Cheapy front row forward option there, 238k, I believe Henry is. Seb Chris returns at centre for the Raiders. Hopawaito goes to the wing. Cheapy Nick Kotrick is out. I mean, Kotrick probably only an injury away from coming in, but even with his output, I, pff, I don't think he really needs tries to, to make any money. Uh, it's not quite the Kotrick of old that could bust tackles and have 20-plus runs at the Tigers. Lachlan Galvin, 18-year-old, rookie star, Benji's picked him at five eight. Aiden Caesar on the bench. Solomona Fatape, hopefully pronounce that okay. He's been named at centre. Uh, as you alluded before the show, Justin Olam is out. Clem, you were speaking to the spy on the way to the studio after teams dropped. He would have been on cloud nine with Galvin. Um, Galvin, someone thrown into the, the cauldron here. Tough baptism of fire in the NRL. But it also says a lot that Benji's picked him. I'm happy to give him a few weeks, see how it plays out, see watch him win this spot, but could be a wonderful cheapie for us. Oh, 100%. Yes, yeah, is very excited mm. um, on in the phone call on the way here. Um, absolutely, I would probably watch for a couple of weeks um, just to see. Um, Caesar's on the bench. But, yeah, definitely how amazing if we've got this, like, amazing oh, cheapie that's God. just come into it. Especially, how good? I know. <laughs> even better if he's a cheapie that can score well and I can get rid of Braden Trindle. Um, <laughs> a week ago we I said this about Ethan Trindle. Strange. Yeah. yeah, we did say about Ethan Strange. Like, he's an 18-year-old <laughs> half on Debu. It's not... Not easy. Like look at Katoa last year for the Dolphins. He never really yeah. produced super catch. Was I, I? I think kid's obviously a very, very good player. Mm. And I wish him well. I hope he does well. Put um, it this way: if in two weeks' time we're sitting here to look at buying him and he's locked into the spot, 
he's a supreme talent because he's 18 yeah. he's held his own for two weeks in the yeah. NRL so I'm so excited to watch him I would not be going early on him because he could easily drop back uh, out of that side in no time at all so let's get a look at him um, ditto with Fatape I don't know the injury news on Olam but every chance to slot in there when fresh so let's just see how he goes as well the beauty of it is with the Tigers they won't have any price changes until after round four so we do get a proper look at these guys which is uh, wonderful Tamalolo, name to start. So good to see he wasn't too gassed <laughs> from that 20 minutes in round one. Um, still got it, the big fella. Pipe is Paul at the night, 345k. There was lots of questions about him before Dylan Lucas was ruled out in saying that he, like, he had the HIA from the weekend. So Pierce Paul came on, looked pretty decent. I think he's always going to look decent because he's tall, he's strong, he's athletic. Starting on the edge, Lucas is out. I was surprised, Ads, that people are so keen on him. I, I think with the naming of the team, she's going to skyrocket up the most purchased. Tyson Frizzell's on one edge. They love Lucas. He'll come back on the other edge, barring Pierce Paul killing it, which he yeah, might. Yeah. Um, could be like a 30, 40 minute forward. He played 40 on the weekend because Anari Tuala went off and I think Lucas went to the edge from memory. So I don't see really what's changed. No, I think it's a trap. I mean... Not knowing what's happening with Dylan Lucas. Like, he's probably out for one week yeah. and he's likely coming back in the side. It's just a trap, but yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Not. Tommy Talau, Clem, at 287k. I think he is the cheapie of the week. Named on the wing for Jason Saab. Played 12 or 13 or so games for the Tigers last season at centre. I think he scored one try, scored terribly. Very different environment. Playing on the right wing at the Manly Seagulls next to a firing Tom Trebojevic. Jason Saab's out for yeah about six to eight weeks with a hammy injury, I think it was. I think he's a great buy. Oh, I think he's an excellent buy. Um, when I heard that he was coming in, it was joy to my ears because I was one of the people that bought Kotrick. <laughs> and me. the reason I got him was obviously I panicked and I was like, who am I going to get to fill the spot? But I think Tommy Talau is an amazing um, person to bring in for a cheapie. Mm. Like, I feel like he's going to, yeah, in that spot, he's, I just think, bring him in. If yeah. you can, or if you need to, if you need to, yeah, have a cheapie. Yeah, no, I like him. Again, like anything, ideally you want to wait a few games uh, and see it play out, see him when he spot, make sure he doesn't get injured or anything like that. But if you are going to cheap to free up cash, of the guys we've mentioned sort of recently and, and even blokes we'll get to shortly uh, who went okay as cheapies in round one, I think he's right up with the best picks. Probably wouldn't play him necessarily this week against the Roosters, but in some softer games, he becomes a really even good play, I think, in CT dubs. So, like that one. Also at the Roosters, Ben Trebojevic, named again at the second row forward slot. Josh Huster returning via New South Wales Cup. Ben Trebojevic, a great cheapie last week. I, look, I don't think Schuster's going to come in and take too many minutes off Ben Trebojevic, but... I do think it's probably worth waiting a week. If you, don't. I think it was about 60% owned Trebojevic. If you're in the 40% that don't, just on the chance that next week Schuster comes in and starts and Benny Trebojevic is on the bench, becomes real issue. So if you can wait there, wait. At the Roosters, Sua Wong, Satili Tupanua named despite injuries in Vegas. At the Dolphins, Max Plath named at 13 with Ray Stone out. Got a HIA last weekend. Lemuelu is also out meaning Ewan Aitken starts on the edge. They've named a four middle forward bench, the Dolphins. Really want to see how the minutes play out at the Dolphins. We'll get to Tommy Flegler in the hot topics. At the Dragons, Luciano Leilua returns on the bench. Tom Eisenhuth starts on the edge. Raymond Fatala Mariner, a really popular mid-ranger, cheapy, sort of in between there, probably more of a mid-ranger, uh, goes to the bench. Viliami Fafida, very popular cheapy, out of the 17. I just think Eisenhuth is an avoid. I think Fatal and Mariner is an avoid. I think because Blake Laurie's also back in the Dragons outfit. Let's see these minutes because I think Lee Triano Leilua could even start this weekend. That's going to be an issue for Eisenhuth, Fatal and Mariner. Let's see it play out again this weekend. Guys, managing debt can feel like going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a no-step challenge with David for feeder at times. It's nasty, nasty stuff. It can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. There's ways to manage it effectively to take a huge weight off your shoulders. To do so, you can reach out to Paddy and George from Mortgage Choice SCW for some advice on how to consolidate your debts and take that stress out of your life. Best of all, it's free of charge because you listen to this podcast. So let them know that SC Playbook sent you to save $129 on a free consult unbelievable to do so flick them a message on instagram at pat and george underscore scw or call them on 02 9521 1611 doesn't matter where in australia you're based 
Clem, I just spoke for ages. Let's get into hot topics and get away from me. This is largely based around the most traded in and out players uh, for on Team List Tuesday. Since teams have dropped, uh, I haven't updated the ones that I've sort of picked out of that list. So it'll alter a little bit, but you'll still get a good gauge of it. Terrell May, most traded in. We're all keen on him. For Tyler Mariner, 363k off his 86. He's the second most traded in. I uh, just had a thought on him. I just don't do it. Wait another week. If he starts, does it again. We can look at him next week at there. Zach Labutt, 465k. Shout out to the spy who's been filthy for two <laughs> days because he reckons we all cost him lay butt by saying we need to wait and see how he goes at the Cowboys. 103 points, Clem. He looked terrific for the Cows. It was against a pretty weak Dolphins outfit, let's be fair. Lots of people jumping onto him. Would you be willing to do it early or do you want to see him do it again? Um, personally, I want to see him do it again, but I did watch that game with you actually and what an absolute performance. Um, the Dolphins' defence like clearly wasn't all there um but yeah 103 points and the happiest moment um like of my whole sunday probably came um when i found out that spy had been talked <laughs> out of him so that you know he didn't have that all of our sundays in his team it was fantastic um but yeah i definitely do like him um and i definitely want to give him another look this week and if he performs again then i'll definitely be trading him in 100 percent. yeah ads uh, what's your take on him mate would you be ta- he looks like Again, one of these guys where I was saying if we end up having to, to drop a gun who's about to drop a bunch of cash to make money, Labert could be this guy who makes some quick cash, but he has to do it again. If he yeah. comes out and gets 30, that cash growth is stunted. Yeah. Uh, same as you guys. I think he looked, he looked really good, mm. but it was against a poor Dolphins defence, so a lot of them look good. Mm. And as you said earlier, that score will drop out after round, after round three or yep. four. So. You know, if he comes out and gets another 100, he'll be a must almost. He will. But if he gets 30, then you'd be happy he didn't have him. So I think I think wait and see. But he did – he looked good to the eye as a player. And we see countless examples of this early in the season. Players have one good game. Everyone jumps on. He stink, They stink it up. They get one half-right price rise because of the ton in their rolling average. But it all comes back to, to the average uh, of past seasons. Not to say, obviously, Labart being a rookie, so not so much in his case. Mm. Um the difference with Labor Day is, you know, we rate him. He's a good footballer. Rate yeah. him all off his games last year. Rate his, him in his games for Papua New Guinea. He looks so good. So I don't mind people going for him. I will be waiting and reassessing until next week. Josh Kerr, another really popular one. 349k. He scored 76 points in 40 minutes. He had a try in that. He had a line break in that. <clears throat> the Dolphins have named a four-forward bench. And they had uh, the injury to Lemuelu on the weekend as well, which impacted minutes of the pack. Need to see the minutes for Josh Kerr because he could easily come in and play 30 and just be an absolute plotter. Not a bad footballer, Kerr. Got a bit of attack in him. Got an offload in him at times. Need to see it again, though. Morgan Smith is seventh most traded in. 345k. Workhorse. No frills. 58 points. Didn't have a tackle bust or an offload. He may not bust 65 points this year. But he'd probably get between 50 and 60 every game and make us some good cash there. Tom Flegler, Clem, 475k. For all the reasons I just mentioned with Josh Kerr, I do think he's probably a watch. Played some additional minutes on the weekend. Scored a try, had the line break. The thing with Flegler is, compared to a lot of these other front rollers, he's a very good footballer. We know he'll at least get his 45 to sort of, you know, maybe 50 minutes at the Dolphins. Is he someone you'd be going on early or...? I wouldn't personally, um, but I can see why people were trading him in because obviously front row is such a wasteland and like he's quite a good price mm. point. But in saying that, um, my concern with him is um, he's quite fiery. <laughs> and so what, like if the Dolphins aren't performing, is he going to like get heaps of penalties? Is he going to get some bins? Because I'm pretty Embrace sure. Embrace the fire, yeah. Clem. <laughs> um, but also, yeah, I, I feel like I'd watch him again Um He's definitely not someone that I'd be like, oh, my God, I have to have him in my team. Mm. Yeah. He, he also has the buy next week. Yeah. So Yeah, of course. I'm not sure. And, and, and do, you really want, do you really want to be starting one or the other? Oh. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. say jokers because they're Bulldogs players on most people's benches honest. and they're great yeah. players. But The answer um, is no, you don't. No. So I think at the moment we're all desperate to find two starters. Yeah. You know, I might yeah. have the buy next week. So for sure, you can have another look at their minutes, both Kerr and Flegler this weekend. I'll be at that game, actually. 
Uh, Maddie, we're live on KO with Bloke in a bar on Sunday. Live show, into yep. the footy. How exciting. Yeah, so it's going to be great. We start at 2.45 Sydney time. Goes about an hour, and mm. then within 15 minutes, you've got the Roosters Mela game, which turns out that's going to be an absolute ripper. Yeah. It's almost a game of the round, I yep. reckon. So, yeah, very exciting. If you are keen to tune in on KO, check that out. Go down and grab yourself a case of bloke in a bar for the show as well. Give yourself an extra treat for it. There's a store locator at the bloke in a bar website. Go and get yourself a case a bit. Uh, where were we? Zach Lomax, number 10 most traded in. Holy dooly, Clem. 108 points. I'll get his stats up here. They're in here somewhere. He, to <laughs> me, was the real talking point of round one. We were all keen to see how he went with that shift to the wing. Uh, of course, the Dragons came and exploded, defied, I'd say, the critics. I think everyone was a critic of the Dragons, myself included, coming into the season. 630k, 39 in base, 24 runs, 10 tackle breaks, goal kicking. It's only one game sample size. That's about as good as it gets, though. Oh, my God. He was amazing. What an absolute revelation. Um, has he become almost a must-have? Um, I am starting Jeez. to think, how do I get him into my team? Um, I definitely think, you know, if you're looking for um, someone in CT Dub, like, I reckon that he's, like, right up there with someone you should be considering. Um, I actually have an apology here. Um, so, my... Spy? <laughs> not to spy. Good. So, one of the guys I work with is a massive Dragons fan, like, probably all-time Dragons fan, and he had um, Lomax in his team pretty much all season, and then somehow I managed to convince him to oh. not start with Lomax. <laughs> I think it was for Tyrrell uh, Tyrrell, uh, for Tyrrell May? Yep. For May instead. So, I mean, that's not the Could worst thing in the world. Um, no, not Cheryl May, for Taylor May. Oh, so that's, that's even better. Um, but, yeah, I must apologise, Nathan. I'm so sorry for talking you out of it. Um, uh, I'm uh, devastated for you. I love that Nathan gets an apology <laughs> for you talking him out of Lomax, but the spy doesn't for you talking him out of Labour and everyone else. So, oh, God. Zachy Lomax adds... Happy with my centre wing so far. All performed well. Not an issue. But Zach Lomax... A huge watch going into next week. Yeah, definitely. I've always been a Lomax fan in Supercoach. I've had him a yeah. few times over the years. He's obviously pretty expensive. I don't know. If the Dragons going to do that every week. They were up against a pretty average opposition, as it turned out last weekend. So I, I don't think you can expect him to do that every week. But yeah, he's definitely a watch. But I wouldn't be – I'd be prioritising bringing in Taylor May if you didn't have him. Yeah. I think he's, he's cheaper and he looks – I just thought the way he looked to the eye was just – Super, and he's gonna, and he was playing against Melbourne, so it's, it comes down to who, who else you've got. I, yeah. I don't want to trade out either Roger or Taylor May. I'm, I'm very happy to have both of those guys, and they're they're cheaper. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you, mate. And if you can do it again, you know what? It's not even Lomax doing it again; it's the Dragons doing it again. They were brilliant on the weekend, and I was really really stoked to see it. I hope they back it up. I hope Lomax backs up, but it's one game. Um, I hate to use the doggies as a punching bag, but round two last year when, this, when the doggies went down to Melbourne and towed up the storm and, and there was a few good performances and people looking to buy and that, and we know where that ended up. So let's just make sure that doesn't happen to the Dragons. Sorry, Ed. It was just the one that came to mind. I'd like to thank you for my final <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, that, I'm not going to stand for that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Jacob Kraz killed it that game, actually. So. Jacob Kraz did. But you know, you know what it did show? All jokes aside, what it did show was last year I remember going down to Melbourne and thinking this is going to be bad because mm. we'd just been touched up by Manly. Melbourne had done their usual. They win, win, round, win round one every year. So you, and you're going down to Melbourne. So I just thought how, how badly we're going to get beaten. The next minute we're up 26 nil. <laughs> so a week is a long time in football. I remember last year there was a lot of turnarounds in round two versus round one. So I don't know, just let's not react too much to round one, whether it's a good performance from Lomax or a bad performance from someone else. But we'll wait and see. One game sample size is terrible to go off and <laughs> yeah. they inevitably do backfire. Again, like I'm, I'm quite big on not trading round two just to see the two game sample size and see if something backs up. Uh, but in the case of this one where I just need to fix my front row, it's like yeah, I have to make it. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Bo Fermor, 467k, 34 points on the weekend. With Fermor, Clem, I'm an owner. The reality is that the, a big part of why we bought him 
was because he was running off Kieran Four. And the second he was withdrawn from that game in the final teams, you went, shit, this isn't going to hurt Fulmer. You add on to that, the, the Titans were really poor. They cannot surely dish that out again this week. Oh, they won't actually because they're on the bye. Um, but yeah, people are mass selling Fermor. I can see the logic in it, especially with the buy and if people want to see other players. But I do still think he's, he's a solid hold, Bo Fermor, at the price, the attacking upside. I just want to see him. They sort of came out the times and said that with the buy in round two, four and with one of his many, many niggles, they were happy not to, to give him that extra time off uh, by missing round one. I think he's a solid hold. Oh, yeah, I own him too, mm. and I'm definitely holding. Um, I actually didn't see that game. I was at a wedding, mm. um, and I actually gulped when I opened the Supercoach app. I was like, oh, my God, what happened? And then you told me that forum was out, so that made perfect sense. Um, unless you're desperate, I think, like, he's a hold. Um, you got him, like, yeah, for all the reasons you just said. So I feel like watch him again one more time. Um, for me, it's kind of good because I need a loop option. For my vice captain this week. So he's going to turn into that. So he's going to actually be really handy for me this yeah, week. Yeah, not bad. Which I'm stoked with, yeah. When, when Nico backs up, he's 26 with a 28. <laughs> the only problem is I look at my when bench and I have so many poor scores. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be looping and getting... Yeah. Puasso seven. Well, not Puasso, oh, but yeah. someone else. <laughs> Can we... This is, getting, this is like bullying at this point. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring Puasso in here instead of saying Puasso because... I'm betting you wouldn't when you see the size of him. I hope there's a good lock on the door, <laughs> A Danny maybe. Levi, a Danny Levi 15. I'll in, get in 60, Danny Levi here minutes. to protect me from Pilasa. <laughs> I'll get Tommy Starling here to jam him if he comes near me. Uh, speaking of that wedding, Clam, how's the flight back the next morning? Oh, my God. Oh, it was fantastic. So, um, Both of them went until I got home at like about 3.30 in the morning. I um, actually flew up to the Gold Coast for 24 hours for my friend's wedding. Um a Kiwi wedding, so the party goes on late into the night. Um, I was not the last to leave, but got home about 3.30 to my mate's house in Burley. Um, woke up at 6 and I was like, oh my God, I booked my flight back for 7 o'clock. Oh I need to get God. to the airport. I could not get an Uber to save my life. So got to the airport, did the full run through security, run through the airport. It's like an episode of The Hangover or something. <laughs> got to the gate and the gate had just shut like five minutes before. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So went and saw the lovely guy the jet star counter and a shout out to him he knew a girl had to get back to manly so she could watch footy and have beers with the boys um and got me on the very next flight plus gave me the front seat with all the leg room oh and as a five foot four exit, girl, right? like you know all that leg room <laughs> yeah really <laughs> needed amazing. It. isn't it funny how you get that treatment but tim wouldn't have got that tim would have been told i would have either yeah. been shoved on a flight the next day for next and not refunded or shoved in the overhead compartment <laughs> That's all right. Can't go hell. But the main thing was I made it for beers and footy with the boys. (laughs) We did. It was a good result in the end. Uh, Getting through a couple more. We do have a few things to get through before moving on. So, uh, it's Caelan Ponga. Number 13 most most traded out, 892k, off the back of 50 points, which he's a very popular captain. I was one of them. And then when Cleary came out, Nico came out, both went terribly. You go, take that 50 points. Yeah. Can you believe people are selling? No, I, can't, I just can't believe it. It's, just, awesome. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you've got Caelan Pong, I'd just keep him. It's, it's not worth talking about. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't even want to entertain that. If he comes out off the back of the conversation before around dropping massive break in plays for cash, if he comes in and gets 30 next week, we'll talk. But until that happens... Oh, even then, mate, he could come out and get 150 yeah. the week after. Like, he's just... He had that unbelievable try assist that was pulled back, which could have yes. gone either way as well. And then if that yeah. happens, no one's asking any questions. Drew Hutchinson, 354K. Look, I dodged that one. It's 34 points. As you said, Ads, it was a tough night, like, you know, for both sides. There's not much. Oh, sorry, Parra were good, a bit harsh. Um, but 34 points, give him a week. Like, the base yeah, was definitely. solid enough. Yeah. You're starting half back. He's cheap. Give him a week. Very good defender. We didn't have a lot of ball and great field position to. Give him uh, a lot of opportunities. Lots of touches. I think his base is pretty good with the defence. Like, and he's a good defender. So, yeah, I think if you've got him there, again, I imagine most people have bigger problems in their mm. team than yeah. Drew um, 34 points. Power or Relentless had such high completion, strangled the dogs out of the game. As you said, give them no attacking opportunity. So give Hutcho a week and reassess then. And they had every – okay, now I'm getting my <laughs> moment. They did have every bounce of the ball go their way. I don't know if you I mean, it was absolute BS. And I'm not saying it was referee. I'm just saying it was just so unlucky. Yeah. Every Rub bounce. Ricochet rick off six blokes and we'd knock it on. Then ricochet off six blokes lands in their hands. So that can't keep happening to either us or them. So get the bounce this week. Dogs 13 plus, calling it. 
Uh, I'm not calling that, no, but I, I just happily take competitive performance. But, but yeah, I can't happen every week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brayden Trindle, 439k. I've got down there next to him 34 points. It was definitely not 34 points because I owned him and he broke my heart. It was about 18 <laughs> points. Um, tough game over in NZ, low scorer. Three soft games coming up. When I say soft, the Raiders are actually the fourth, the third one in that ad. So I'm not just picking on you, mate. Great win by the Raiders on the weekend, by the way. But super coach wise, I'm happy to have players playing against them. I hope we can back it up. But time will tell. Uh, I'll be giving him another week, seeing how he goes against some soft opposition in the next three or so weeks. Um, don't mind the little move to him to Luke Brooks if Luke Brooks kills it this week, though. So one more chance for a young, tricky Trindle. A few sit v starts for the show. Ads, I'll start with you, mate. Uh, with your side, mm. uh, anything? What comes to mind with your sit v starts? Uh, I haven't Do thought about. S- I- I'll start. Yeah, you mate. start, and I'll have a look at my so team. So my CT dubs: Hammer, Tuvasa, Shet, Taylor May, Ben Trebojevic picked themselves pretty well. I've got Arthur's on the bench. Coming up against that weak bunny's edge, I actually don't mind the idea of potentially even playing him as a final bench spot because I think he could score well. Had a big work rate as well last weekend. Not playing Bostock, not playing Torpiki, uh, although he's a very playable option in your CT dubs each and every week. But Melbourne, down in Melbourne, who just kept the Panthers scoreless, happy to wait off there, but I'll be keen to play him in following weeks. He had like 18 runs, a bunch of tackle bars, really good going. Playing... If Furmore stays in my team, I'll probably be playing Sean Lane, Furmore obviously on the bye, Sean Lane, Nathan Cleary, Kalen Ponga, uh, and then it'll just depend on my who I trade in, but probably Jesse Arthurs. Clem, what are you looking at? Um, let me just get mine up. We're all so prepared here for you. <laughs> I can do mine. My friend does you do yours first. <laughs> well, mine has highlighted an issue with um, both Furmore. So I've got him, but obviously I can't have him in the bench. Yep. So at the moment I'd have to have... Piakura, Cleary, Ponga, and I'm probably looking at Hutchison. Like he's the highest scoring of the yep. rest of the guys that I've got left. So, so that's not um, not being negative on Drew, but that's probably don't want to be having to start him this week. Yeah, so no idea. You're saying that Sharkies six o'clock game. Yeah, I mean it's it's not there's, there's like they say there's worse options like. Um, he's, but not, uh, he's not a centre or a winger who, if they don't score points, could get like seven or like 13. I'd yeah, otherwise I'm looking at Salmon's the other option. Yeah. Because I don't really want to trade out Fermor because I you know, brought him in last week knowing he had the buy, so it seems crazy to trade him out. But uh, I'm the, the only thing is I might, I might trade out Cottridge for uh, Talau. So maybe yeah. then Talau's a starter. Talau's a very viable play um, at CT Dub, I think. I'm also starting Lukey P. Kura Smithies. I'll tell you about my front row forward in a second, Clem. <laughs> so I am starting Tommy T and Kalen Ponga. Um, then for my CT dub, I'm starting RTS and May. Um, to a picky, I'm going to just give him a go against the Storm. Um, Benny Trevojevic, um, I still have Drew Hutchinson in here, so that's one of my thoughts, whether or not to trade him out. Um, Nick Kotrick's going to turn into Tommy Talau, so that's another player I could do down there. Um, Dylan Brown, um, starting Nico Hines, um, Nathan Cleary, Lukey Lane and um, Pia Cora yep. in my second row and also Smithies out there on the bench, um, starting Cotter and May um, and then starting Brandon Smith, who for Jeez. once in my life did not let me down at the <laughs> beginning of the season. I could not believe it. I was so happy. With like 48 <laughs> points. And it's like, I was like, you know what, I'll situa- take it. Our situationships evolved. <laughs> oh, the cheese. He owed it to you. It had been a tough couple of years. It's been two years. You're very faithful. <laughs> oh, I'm so faithful. You're loyal. <laughs> and, uh, we've touched on them a little bit, but what trades are you eyeing off at this stage uh, for this week, early days? Teams have just dropped a lot to dissect, but... Yep. Palliser to May, that's already happened. <laughs> yep. And then if I toss up another one, it would be Cottridge to Talau. Yep. Which I might do just because even though Talau could be a week four option, there's just a few players we're talking about in that situation. So I, I, I'm a bit of a believer of get the cash generators early and now that Cottridge is out of the side, he can't do that, whereas Talau yep. can. So it feels like a bit of an obvious one to do. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Clem? Um, mine are going to be Palacia to May, definitely, um, and then Kotrick to Tadar, 100%. Nice. Yep, locked in. Oh, we're the same. <laughs> so <laughs> my skippers tell the story of my trade. So I'm looking at the moment 
because I've got Palacea, I'm going to VC Nico Hines. If Nico can go like 100 plus, especially after last week's captaincy debacle, I'll loop, <laughs> use Palacea and cop the... You know, the 15, 20 will get on the bench there inevitably somewhere. I, I would really like to get sort of 110, 120 from Nico to do the loop, uh, in which case I'll probably just go Taumalolo straight to Terrell May in one hit and just have Terrell May as my one front row forward. Gives me another week to work out who I want in my second front row forward spot going forward because having to use two front row forward trades, you know, by round two is just so heartbreaking. I'd hate to be using another one by round three or round four if I don't get that right. So I'm praying Nico can go good as a VC. Uh, it'll sort my captains, it'll sort my front row for all of one week. Uh, if Nico doesn't sort of go 100 plus there and become loopable, it's going to have to be Tao Malolo to Terrell May, uh, sorry, Palace to Terrell May. I'd play Tao Malolo in my front row and then I'd have to generate an extra 20k to do that. So it might force me into something like Furmore to um, Tommy Talao. Got to work out the second one for now. Maddie, have you had a look at yours yet or been uh, hard at it? Yeah, my, like who I'm going to play, like my reserves. Tra uh, trades or, or trades, yeah. So I'm going to go Palacea to me and I'm going to go Salmon to Talao. Yeah, happy to go cut ties with Salmon straight up? Yeah. I am, and I, I needed to do that to get me in, so... Yep. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, I mean, I could be doing similar, minus the salmon factor. Skipper's claim? Um, so, I'm captaining Tommy T, 100%, um, and vice-captaining Nico, and then doing the loop with Fermor if Nico, when Nico yeah. goes off on Friday night. <laughs> he doesn't let you down twice, Nico. Surely. Surely not. Ads? <laughs> you know, I would say, uh, <laughs> well, I clearly have to VC or C Hines. Like it's as yeah. much as I hope that he doesn't score well. He just generally scores well even against yeah. great opposition. So he's just such a consistent player, and obviously it's a good matchup for him this week. So to be honest, I like your idea actually, the yeah. Palace option. So I might do the same because I don't really have a VC option. My, my concern is Furmore. If I start him, I'm still stuck with um, Lolo running around. Yeah. So then I'd be actually losing a decent um, player for my VC. It's so a nice then, little one, eh? Hey? So yeah, that's a that's a. And at I'm least glad I came to the podcast we, to hear We it. know <laughs> the dogs will come out. Yeah, just like the good Palacio idea last year, last yeah. week. If the dogs do come out uh, and tail up, and Nico goes poorly, you don't care. It's the slightest of silver linings. We did defend sharks. well the other night. I assume you watched the game. Did like the, the same bull, in the, the trial. Bull, as the Bulldogs well. defended very well. One try off an intercept. One try off a yeah. kick. Like it was and and a huge amount of possession against the Sharks in the trial. Yeah, so, so I don't think there's any guarantee yeah. that Nico goes big. So you probably want to VC him, not see him in that yeah. case. But yeah, so that's, that gives me a way that I actually could use the VC. Yeah. And C? Well, I guess it has to be Turbo then because yeah. you can't do Cleary. But I just isn't – they're playing Penrith, aren't they? Who's playing the Penrith? No, no, they're playing Roosters. Um, Roosters. Roosters. Jeez. I know he's, he's match-up proof, but they look pretty good, the Roosters. I'm not sure I want to captain – it's not against ideal. Against the Roosters, yeah. So, yeah. Two but I don't want to captain Hines because I want him to go low. So I have to have <laughs> some bias. Well, I, can't, I can't. like I've, I can't be watching it and thinking, oh, it's good for Supercatch. I, yeah. I won't even be remotely thinking that. You're standing next to Gus Gould and Nico Scores trying to give a little fist bump. <laughs> no, you'd never do <laughs> it. I know, I know. It shan't be happening, yeah. Um, Tommy Turbo for me, uh, if Nico can't get the job done there. Matty, your skippers? Yep, Turbo for me, and this is all bias. I hope Manly <laughs> murder the Roosters, and I'll be riding Tommy Turbo. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Uh, a few very quick questions. We do have to wrap it up tonight. From the Brewster, an OG of SC Playbook. I'll keep it simple. If only one this week, Lomax or Labart. Ads, I'll throw to you. Laybutt, just for the price. Yeah, I'm Laybutt at the price as well. Uh, one from Zach Adams. Clem, if you had to downgrade Cleary, Hines, Ponga or Drinky this week, one of them to free up cash, gee, that's hard. Which one are you biting the bullet on? This is the toughest question God, I've ever had hard. to face. Um, the answer oh, is God. none, but none. That's, not the what, answer is that, none. that's not what Zach's asked. All right, I'm just going to throw... A dart at the dartboard yep. there, landed on Drinky. There we go. Off you go. Uh, but please don't. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> I'm saying Drinky because I don't own him of the others. Yeah, and I've picked the wow. other three for a reason. <laughs> uh, could come from Miss Jane, another of the absolute OGs of SC Playbook. I see a lot of super coaches wanting to go hard on trades early to get the best team possible to maximise points. 
Is it the same strategy with head-to-head? Uh, early on, the head-to-head and, and overall strategies become very different as the season goes on. But early on in the season, it's still very similar in that you still need to build a bit of squad value to be able to essentially get to your strongest 17 as quick as you can in the season. So very similar strategies on those trades early on in the season. You know, you're trying to save trades for the back end of the year in head-to-head and for finals time as opposed to overall where you're focusing more around the buy period. You can save some trades around the buy period in head-to-head, especially if your league settings are that you don't have um, fixtures on the major buy rounds. So, but yeah, early on, the first sort of four or five weeks, just get that cash generating, get the good players you've missed out on uh, and go with it there. Adds question from Reese Chu. With Cam Munster potentially out long-term, is Jonah Pezzett an option to make some cash? So Munster was ruled out. It wasn't even named in the squad. Pezzett is about mid-400K. I had a look at him today. His scores last year weren't terrific. He didn't average that well. He is a year older. He does look good. The Storm looked good. He's dual 5'8 halfback. Not for me, despite a tough 5'8 position, but you know he has crept into rele- relevance if we get word Munster's out for longer. Yeah, not for me. I think same as you. We don't know about Munster. Obviously, as soon as he's back, like ready, he'll be back in. If if Pezza was two hundred and twenty, like yeah. yeah, sure. But at four fifty, or whatever you just said, it's awkward. Like I'd rather spend a bit more and get Luke Brooks if I had to. But yeah, or Didn. What was Didn's about five? Didn's about five. Uh, somewhere between five, but five sixty, five eighty. I think he's about five eighty. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just no, not for me. That's yeah, one from Dino Hyde. Drop one of Bostock, Hutchinson. Or salmon, Clem? I feel like I'm getting to the tough ones. Yeah, I get the tough ones. Um, I think, yes, definitely get in May. I think that's excellent. Um, I would honestly probably drop one of Hacho or salmon. Um, I've got, yeah, I've got Hacho and Bostock. Who would I drop? Maybe Bostock. I'd drop Bostock. I'd drop Bostock. Bostock. I mean, yeah. he got a well, he, 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 took, he took a try. Did, did he have a line break with his try? Yeah. and So, yeah, he, so he, he scored 38 try. with the yeah, try and a line break. Yeah. So he had 11 other than that. So Yeah. And, uh, Hachi and Salmon are going to kill it. <laughs> yep. I'm going to agree with you and say Thank you, Clem. Great trade. I'd go Salmon. Get Next week it will be you, me, and Spy. We'll get rid of this <laughs> anti-bulldog we'll host. Then Who's hosting? <laughs> Maddie, because he's got the best range. <laughs> um, I'll be on the cameras. I'd drop Salmon of the three. Uh, I think Bostock, look, I don't really play in my team, but they'll be on bad, the Dolphins. I'm not saying they're necessarily in for a big year or a massively improved year. But Wayne Bennett's at the helm. They have depth. I think they'll be okay. They'll be much better than the weekend. I just think Bostock, CT Dub, if you can jag a few tries at some point, there's some cash to be made. Salmon, I can see him being on the bench at any point, playing limited minutes and potentially dropping. So we'll have to be patient with Bostock, but at least he's a regular starter and I feel more confident about him. Lucky last, add, you're at the pub, steak or snitty? Steak. Clem? I like both, but steak. Yeah. Oh, I am a steak and chips girl. And through. Steak Absolutely. every day of the week. Smothered in sauce. How Maddie? good? I'd rather get steak, but I'm tight ass, so I'll, I'll get <laughs> I'll get <snitty. laughs> Very nice. Guys, we will wrap that up for the round two NRL Supercoach podcast SC playbook ads. Thank you, mate. Good luck this weekend. Thank you for that, but not thank you for your oh. behaviour during this one. But no, thank you, mate. I'm looking forward to Dogs Friday night. Dogs 40 to 38. Nico Hines 180 Supercoach points. <laughs> o- okay, I'd be disappointed with the defence in that case, but I'll t- I'd take the two points. Clem, a welcome return. Very big as always. Good to have you back. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be back. How good. (laughs) Cheers, guys. Thanks for tuning in.